I guess now we'll talk about um, the wood roast scene and why we chose the wood roast um, and how we came up with that idea. So maybe you talk about like what you what your thoughts are. Why do you think that? Because I know that we both talked about it. Well, first of all, how many years did we not wood roast? I think only two or three, maybe, maybe three or four. I'm not sure. Well, so we didn't. We were just roasting on an old Turkish coffee roaster. So we started roasting with gas because that was and obvious. we were using the gas to no. roast. And we were selling the roasters, so that that's how we got into doing it, is selling the roasters. Mm -hmm. And we of course kept one and started roasting and demoing the roasters. We we're importing the Turkish roasters, and uh, we got this old one and using it the way that it was set up to roast, right? Which, which was is gas, which is gas. we were using LP. So then we decided to start roasting with wood. But we did have a conversation one day about roasting coffee in general right. and how to be unique because after all, there's probably a million coffee roasters out there and they're all kind of using the same process of roasting. Same methods, yeah. So the same roasters. Right. They're all just doing the same thing and the only thing that makes them unique or different is their recipe or the beans that they use or the combination of the beans that they use. Well, they've got, there's gas roasters. There is some electric roasters. That's a little bit popular, hot air, but that's pretty, that's pretty unpopular. They're starting to become a little popular, but not, you know, not as popular as a drum, traditional drum. So you got a drum spinning and you've got a, a flame on the bottom, which would be gas. Um, and I don't think that, I think the big one was, is, is the reason why we probably chose to start roasting with wood was I was researching old ways of doing things because I'm really, I love the old ways. And uh, in Italy, they always roasted with wood back in the old days because they didn't have gas. Mm -hmm. You know, gas was a fairly modern thing. And what I liked about the wood was we could use the wood off our own property. We've got seven acres, so that's nice. Um, so we have a sustainable you know, But use. the first challenge would be to modify our roaster right. so that it could roast with Which gas. was, I will say- Or that, without gas. That was not easy. Um, but we did build a custom firebox and then had to reroute venting and it was kind of complicated, but we did do it. We, we manufactured a, a box for it and, uh, and revented it. And I think the big one was that, you know, and I was very curious, um, there's a couple roasters still in Italy that roast with wood. Um, it's, and I think the big thing for me was it actually did taste better and it had an effect on the coffee. So you're adding a different, a different dimension to the coffee. Um, what defined it for me or what was the, the end game was we tasted before and after we did gas and we did the, a gas version of the same blend and the same style of roast, exactly the same color, everything. And then we did a wood roast and I was like, man, that is, I mean, did, we both were, were just blown away by the flavor and it wasn't like the coffee that we first did with the gas was bad. In fact, it was fantastic. It just that the wood added a different dimension. Wouldn't you agree that, that yeah, well, and I also think that once that was realized that the wood was giving it a completely different feeling and it, and it gave it like a different flavor, then we started to go further into understanding maybe different kinds of woods would then take it even further as far as different flavors just based on the wood that you're roasting. Right. And so we would use alder or we would get some apple wood or find some tree that came down that was walnut and try you know hazelnut whatever and i think that uh just using different woods started to give it different feelings and flavors and nuances whether it was fruity or smoky or whatever it was right so right now we currently use i think an alder maple and cherry is kind of our base because that's what grows on our property um, but we also sometimes get hazelnut um, like last year, we got a bunch of hazelnut from a hazelnut orchard that was taken out mm -hmm. um, because they, they, I guess they cut down the old hazelnut orchards and then they replant them for whatever reason. So we got a bunch of that. And that adds kind of an interesting nuance. Mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes I even get, um, sometimes I get the apple, but it's not as often. We have yeah. some apple trees on our property. So, but again, we use our barrels, the leftover barrels, because we replace the barrels every, yeah, we can burn every year. That. So we can burn the barrel staves and and that's oak, of course. But I think another thing to recognize that's important is, is that the tradition of actually roasting with wood isn't always necessarily easy or efficient No. in the way that you have to man the whole thing the whole time. There's no press buttons. There's no timers, really. There isn't a just like put it out and always have a consistency. And so that's what makes it handmade. That's what makes it natural. 
And that's what gives it more of a, a hands-on end product when you do taste the coffee because, you know, things are not done by robots. I mean, they are, but they maybe shouldn't be. Yeah, I agree. And this isn't one of those things. And, and a lot of times people, you know, want to understand the process of how it looks when you're doing it and, mm -hmm. and how long does it take and what is the temperature that you're at. And I think that's the one thing that you kind of learn as you go is that this isn't easy and, you know, you have to build a fire. You don't just walk in, turn on the lights, turn on the roaster and start working. Yeah, push buttons. Or run it on your laptop, which is funny because that's what a lot of people have gone to these crazy, you know, um, automated things, which is awesome. If you're doing a massive roasting operation and you want to be super consistent, I totally get it. Well, and I think that's why it's not as popular. That's right. why there's like four people in the whole United States that even bother doing it. Right. Because it isn't something that's going to be easy to do. Well, I don't think that our, that Millar's Wood Roasted Coffee is going to be a scalable, like to this huge manufacturing plant will never be some of the large guys because it, it isn't practical mm -hmm. so which is okay because um, we do it because we love it and we do it because it's a it's a niche market and it's it's all about you know super super it's like I always I always tell people I'm like it's sort of like wood-fired pizza versus a, a gas or an electric pizza oven mm -hmm. you know wood-fired pizza is, is usually made on a small scale um, and it's special you know and it has a special appeal to certain people it's back to the old ways but I think that the, the inspiring thing that you and I always talk about whenever we talk about like all the things we do, whether it be pull espresso machines, wood roasted coffee, barrel aging, those type of things, I think what's inspiring for us is that we always look at the, the past and we say, and I always ask the question, I, I know I always ask you this, it's like, what are the old, what are the old ways of doing things? Mm. Um, like, was it better? And then if it was better, then let's do that, you know? And, Obviously, there's within reason of practicality, but I, I just, I'm just totally sold on it. Well, I, can't. I, just, I think that uh, there's always going to be a, a clientele of people out there that embrace uh, more of a natural or a genuine way of doing anything, right? Whether it's coffee or, or making espresso or whatever you're doing, and I think that that's something that you and I try to embrace exactly on purpose. Exactly. I don't think this is like oh, we should do it because it's the, the trend. I think that we would do it either way. And for some reason, there's always gonna be a group of people out there that, that share that same concept, whether it's a trend or not for them. Right. And they're gonna realize that I like things done by hand, maybe not by a machine. And you see it in cooking. You oh, yeah. see it in everything where our people are just like, you know, I don't, I don't wanna buy a, a frozen pie in the freezer. I want one that somebody made by hand and, and I'm willing to pay more to have it done that way or, you know, whatever their reason is. Well, and I think it's inspiring. I think it's inspiring for the, to, that we can still make products like that small, you know, small batch by hand. I mean, that's inspiring. I think that the, mm -hmm. like I call it the slow coffee movement or slow food movement or farm the table, whatever you want to call it. Those Where are you pick the food right. and then you cook with it or you understand the process. It's a natural process. I actually always thought, I've never understood, why would you take something that's organic and it has all this organic practice to it and then either store it in plastic or, or roast it with gas, which is a petroleum product. Mm. It's like, and, and people don't, don't realize that your food, if it comes directly in contact with petroleum, um, and it's really, you know, maybe split, maybe most people think it's splitting hairs, but I don't think it is. You're infusing that coffee. It's getting totally saturated with, with that gas, with that petroleum product. Um, there is some residuals. I, you can't tell me there isn't some residuals off of that. So if we're roasting it with a natural, a natural wood, we're also getting the benefit of not using petroleum um, f to, to cook that, you know, cook that food. It is a food product. So, you know, I think it's important. I think it, it just, it follows in alignment with an organic practice to start to finish. You're not starting out organic and ending up with using petroleum at the end mm -hmm. um, or storing it that way, you know, so it's, it's, uh, I think it's important, you know, and I think that we're, we're inspired for it and that's why we did it. Well, and, and I think that it's great that not everybody is doing it. Right. And I think that it's like a, a reality to say, if this was being done by the masses, then maybe it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be special anymore. It wouldn't be unique. Right. And it's, and it's, again, it's not practical to do it, to, well, to deliver it to the masses. So. And then what is that saying? Right. If not everybody's doing it, then maybe, you know, just the movement in itself is something that will always be unique.